Yes, bless you. We're vlogging today from the living room. You are currently destroying this. In today's Ion, we are outlining my book, my next book. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's take the hair out because this is starting to look really funky. So today we are vlogging the third book in Jezebel's origin series right here. If you've been following along with my latest vlogs, then you know, well, obviously this one is published in case you didn't know, and it's linked below. But then I just finished drafting the second book in the series, and I think there's three total. And so while I'm trying to figure out what to do next, as far as what work in progress to work on next, I figured I should probably outline book three, no matter what, because I only know a sense, like a very tiny, tiny, tiny sense of what it's about. I'm trying to think how to tell you without spoilers. So think of it this way. Jezebel is the evil queen in the Stolen Kingdom series and she especially shows up in this book. So there are three big things that we learn about her. One of them is in here. No, two of them are in here actually. And then we learn more about those two things and a third thing in this book. Okay, I think that's vague enough that it won't give anything away. So basically, in this book, we focus on something you learn in The Cursed Hunter about her. We'll just call it the most obvious thing we learn about her in that book. And in book two, there's another focus on something we learn in this book, which we just wanna, oh gosh, this is so hard to say. I don't wanna say any more than that. But then the third book in this series is the one where we learn about I think I can say this, it's not a spoiler. It's just called The Legend of the Han of a Day. And that is introduced in this book and then it kind of gets more of an explanation, I think, I hope, in this book. It's been so long since I wrote these that I don't actually remember um, how much that got put on the page versus how much was in my head. You know what I mean? So today's project, before I even go into the beat sheet and I start outlining, which just a side note, I just recorded a video and I'll link it below about my outlining process where I actually walk you through how I go through the beat sheet and outline. But before I can even do this, I have to do something that's unique to the Jezebel origin series because I have stuff about her in other books that I have to make sure lines up. This is hard. If you're writing in a series, or in this case, this is technically a new series, but if you're writing in a world that you've created already, you have to make sure that things line up. So I have already gone through this book and checked what's in The Cursed Hunter as far as references to the Han of a Day, but I have not gone through this book yet so I am really hoping I left myself a little bit more information in this book otherwise I have no idea where the information is yeah I really I'm confused Zion I have no idea I think figuring out what the legend is that I already created in past books is all I'm gonna make myself do today because I am so tired I'm so tired and that's partly because Mohsen has actually gone on a business trip for three days. Um, by the time you see this, he will have been back for a long time, but right now, I'm right in the middle of it, and we're doing good, because you are the best baby ever. Yeah, but he did wake up in the middle of the night just for 20 minutes to just have a bottle, go back to sleep, slept for 12 hours besides that break in the middle. I can't go back to sleep as fast as him, so of course, I laid awake for like an hour or so, and then <laughs> I'm not used to Mohsen being gone, so I feel like the house makes all kinds of crazy noises that I don't notice when he's here and that kept me awake. I was like, what is that? Who's there? So I just did not sleep well. I think we need a penny moment. Come here, they can't see you, you're too short. I think we need some penny love in the vlog Mwah. because she's been, you know, a little MIA, a little bit jealous of baby, but we still love you. And she's starting to love baby too now that he spits up and you can eat it. Nasty dog. <laughs> Yeah, so Zion and I are gonna go play, right? And I'm gonna try <laughs> the first part of my outlining scheme during his next nap. Wish me luck. All right, the little cutie is sleeping. This is my Google Doc and what I had done so far. I copy pasted in the different beats that I want to go through, and then I went through this whole book right here and found every mention that I could of the Han of a Day and their legend, which was not very much in case you're curious. There's this chunk and then there's this chunk and that's it. So I mentioned this in another vlog, but I was like, I think 
actually the main legend is mentioned in here. So I am about to go through that document for this book next. And I'm just gonna basically take this word and put it up here in the search box and see what I find. Oh yeah, there's a ton of mentions. You can't really see this. Let me zoom it in a tiny bit. Like look how many mentions there are. All those yellow bits are mentioned. So I'm gonna go through the document. I don't know how many there is total, but I'm guessing this might be some of the legend right there. And I'm just gonna put everything that I can find in my Google Doc here so I just have it all in one place if I need to reference it. Once I get a sense of what I have to make line up with book three from what happens in the legend and what's actually happening in book three, then I'm gonna go in and start outlining, which I think this is just a copy paste over from the original book one so far and all the different beats. So I have to delete this. Then I will go into the outline of all of these beats here and try to figure out what each of them are. And again, I have that video. I'll link it below if you wanna watch how I do this process because I don't wanna give away this book. But for now, this is all I'm gonna make myself do today is figure out what the legend is in here because I literally, like I kind of remember, but I don't really remember. <laughs> In case you're wondering, here is how I describe the Khan of a Day in the back of the book. And I'm super excited to say I actually had eight mentions. So I'll let you read a sneak peek of this one because it's more towards the beginning and it's so fun. Oh my gosh, I just, I love the Nezrin and Malachi scenes. Let me put it that way. But then I went and I numbered them all and I had eight scenes to go through. So what I want to do now is I want to read through all eight of them because I just copied and pasted them all into the doc. And I want to highlight the important things, maybe make a bullet point list of things like this is what the Han of a Day can do. Here's an ability. Don't forget this, etc., etc. Because I really don't want to miss anything that's going to end up being a plot hole that I have to fix later. I'd rather get this right from the start. Oh my gosh, this is crazy orange lighting. It's not actually this orange here. I don't know why these lights are doing that. Sorry, I got sidetracked. I was coming on here to say it's actually the same day. I just have a new outfit because Zion graced me with some spit up. But progress report, I started the, um, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. It's not even funny. I went through the Enchanted Crown, I found tons of references of the Haunt of a Day. So many good reminders. I'm like, oh yeah, yep, I remember now. Okay, yes, that lines up with what I was thinking. That's as far as I got. I didn't manage to start actually outlining at all. I was like, yeah it was a rough day you guys not only was it really busy my mom came over to help me out and keep me company but then also like i think i mentioned mosin is gone right now i'm exhausted i didn't even get a chance to answer the comments on today's video which normally i'm really good about answering but let me show you this is wild here's the video that just went live there are 103 comments on it already i have only done i think i answered five of those because i upload it to patreon all my videos i try to give them early access if possible over on my Patreon page. So I answered all my patrons before the video went live this morning and then I was like, okay, I'll come back in the middle of the day and then I got overwhelmed because there was already 50 and now there's twice that many. But the fun thing is, here, let me go to the comments for this video specifically. Check this out. You're going to notice if you like pay attention to these, you're gonna see a bunch of option two, option two, option two, 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 option two, option two, option two. There's a couple votes for option three from people who are like adventurous and they want me to branch out. <laughs> and option two, option two, option two, option two, option two. <laughs> and it just goes on and on. And there's a couple for option one as well, which is probably the most normal move out of the three options I would think. And I don't know if I have time tonight to answer all 100 comments So I think I'm gonna go through and heart them because I want everybody to know I saw it and I'm excited <laughs> guys I am going to give it a couple more days like I promised in the video But I'm pretty sure I already know from looking at this what it's going to be Those are all the comments I need to go through tonight and I'm going to watch Netflix well, I do. So thank you guys for helping me vote. I'm so excited. I did a tally as I went. So here we have six votes for option one, seven for option three, and an overwhelming 88 votes so far for option two. <laughs> Dang. And I should have said this sooner. Option two, if you don't know, if you didn't see that video, which I will link below if you'd like to, it's only eight minutes long. In that video, option two is that after I outline book three, then I go on to actually draft book three. So I leave book two on the table for a while. I just 
just finished the first draft a few days ago now, almost a week ago, and I just sit with that because normally I have to leave a first draft and let it sit anyway. So actually that works out really well to just go on to another project and forget what I wrote for a bit so that I can come back to it fresh. That's what I normally like to do anyway when I think about it out loud. It makes even more sense to do something else for a month or whatever it's gonna take, two months maybe. It's terrifying though, because I have not like I said, outlined book three yet, and I'm scared. I'm like, how is this gonna line up with The Enchanted Crown? I don't think I've ever had to make a outline match up to something. Well, that's not true actually, no, because when I was doing the Stolen Kingdom series, all of those were supposed to be based on retellings to different degrees. I think the strongest retelling elements are in The Cursed Hunter, the Beauty and the Beast retelling, because I love that story. But I did try to line up things wherever I could with the retelling, so in a way, this is gonna be like that. It does make it more complicated though. Okay, I can't stand how orange I am right now. This is crazy. I'm gonna go watch Netflix and see what I can find to watch and just relax for the rest of the night and start the outline tomorrow. <laughs> we have a super modest dog right here. Uh, it is Saturday, April 9th, around one o'clock. Zion is at his grandparents' house. but should be coming back soon, and I just haven't done anything since we last talked. So yesterday, I was so burnt out being by myself watching Zion for the third day in a row. It's so hard. I, don't, I just credit to everybody who does it like full time. I was loving it until like the third day and then I was like, I'm exhausted, I need a break. <laughs> so I'm like just soaking it up right now. But now I only have like 30 minutes left. So I realized, okay, I wanna actually get something done while he's gone so I can feel good because you know, it's my personality. I like to uh, accomplish things, it makes me happy. <laughs> Yesterday something really exciting happened though. Let me show you quick. We crossed 30,000 on YouTube. So I'm very excited about that and this video is gonna come out on Monday where I share that I finished my book and of course you guys are voting in here and by the way speaking of the votes I have a tally going let's pull it up ready nine for option one eight for option three and 122 votes for option two I just went through it and I don't even remember my own video but I'm pretty sure that I said today was the last day for the votes but at this point I think it's fairly obvious unless like another hundred people come out of the woodwork and want something else which I don't see happening so that means that as I'm outlining book three, there's a lot of pressure on it because now it's for real. Like when I'm done outlining, I want to actually start writing it. All right, so I kind of gathered everything up. Don't read this unless you want spoilers, but list of some features that I had included for the Haunt of the Day based off of Dragon. Nezrin's question specifically that she's asked, and then there's some other ones in green are questions that I would like to ask myself. If you saw my outlining video, you know that it literally is all about asking the right questions. So I try to make sure they answer anything important. And then no spoilers, but I have a whole section called Breaking the Curse and how does that work? And then we have the legend itself, which I did find. And if you want to read it before this book comes out, it, this legend is referenced in book four. Now I have this in the back of my head. I wanna just jump into outlining and then I'll go back and reference as I go through the beats, I think. I honestly don't know. I, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But the truth is, if I'm I feel stuck here in the middle. Okay, I admit that I am procrastinating a little bit, but I took the questions from my outlining video, this PowerPoint that I had put together, and I just copy pasted them all into this document here so that that way I could go through all of the beats with the questions right there so I could start out and ask myself, what is the lie in this particular book? I need to get rid of the extra notes. We don't need that. And what caused them to believe this? And I already know her backstory. So anyway, I'm gonna go through this. I just have to remind myself, getting started is the hardest part, getting this like feel for the book. And then once I like, can picture where she starts. I can usually figure out where she's going. All right, here goes nothing. I have probably like 10 more minutes at the most, but that's okay. I've got my notebook here. I thought I was going to start in a notebook, but for whatever reason, I am feeling like being very organized in the computer. Like I said in the outlining like video where I explained my process, my process changes with pretty much every book. So in this case, I feel like being super organized, being in the computer, I feel like I'm still gonna need to do the notebook strategy when it comes down to individual scenes. I've talked about this in vlogs before where I kind of just bullet point outline the nitty gritty details of scenes and I ask myself questions. That I still use notebooks for, but in this case, I feel like I need to make it line up with 
the fourth book in the Stolen Kingdom series, technically the third book too. And then I also need to make it line up with books one and two, what I have so far. And so that's just too messy to just do in a notebook. In my brain, it's sort of like breaking right now, trying to imagine it working. So I'm just going to focus on the computer so that I can go back and forth between my notes and the outline. And then if I do get stuck, then I might try the notebook. But I think this might, might work. I don't know. We'll find out. I just realized you can hear the laundry, but that's okay. It's Tuesday the 12th. It's been a while. Can't remember where I left off. I just needed a little bit of a break. I actually saw this yesterday on Sunny Leonard Doozy's um, Instagram, and I really liked how this put it, where it's like rest, work, rest, work, rest, work, and instead of just constantly working, and then you massively burn out. So when I feel myself starting to get tired, I'm trying to listen to that and rest. <laughs> so I really needed to. This laundry's gonna bother me. I don't even know if you can hear it, but I'm gonna go close the door. Okay, there we go. Um. So let me just catch you up on everything that's been happening since we last talked because I have not had a chance to outline, but I'm gonna make myself outline today. It's happening, it's gonna happen now. But first, let me catch you up. I've talked to you guys about how I feel kind of cruddy still, even though Zion's sleeping so much better. And so I did read this section. You can pause and read it if you'd like to, but essentially it says that it can take a while for you to catch up to where basically, I guess, your kid is and relax a little bit and not get woken up by every noise. But I don't know, I still feel like something might be off. A lot of you guys have said different things in the comments. The one that comes to mind, the strongest is vitamin D because I have been vitamin D deficient before. This is Minnesota after all, I think pretty much everybody who lives here is, especially in the winter. But I looked at the prenatals that I, they asked me to keep taking them till they run out. And so those have a good chunk of vitamin D along with a bunch of other things, vitamin B, I don't know, all this, all kinds of good stuff. And I feel better since we last talked, but I still feel like something isn't quite right. I don't feel like myself and Zion's gonna be four months in like, I don't know, less than a week, I think at this point. So I feel like at this point I should start to feel more like myself. So I do have a doctor's appointment with with what's called functional medicine, I think, in May. And I'm very excited about that, just to see like somebody who's looking at you as a whole person and trying to help you get better instead of just like solve something with pills. But also, in the meantime, I had a friend give me this book long time ago, maybe a year or two years ago, and I didn't think twice about it, never read it, until I stumbled across it and I read the subtitle here on the bottom and I saw the word hormones and I was like mm, hold the phone let me read this I'm currently like right in the middle here it's a little bit dense so I am skimming sometimes but I'm learning things about like maybe magnesium I'm learning about PCOS endometriosis I've always wondered if I have endometriosis but I, I think it's really really hard to diagnose which is why it can take like years for doctors to figure that out so I don't know I don't know what's going on but I do love and I'm very excited about the sections where it's like helping you understand which foods can help reduce inflammation because I think that's valuable no matter what and how to treat like acne and headaches and sugar cravings so I haven't got to that part yet but I'm really hoping it'll have some insights for me there so I wanted to mention it for anybody who's curious because I know a lot of you have actually been really interested in this and some of you are on the same boat as me or just dealing with other kinds of stuff so I just want to shout out this book now I have procrastinated long enough I've got my planner notebook Save the cat writes a novel and of course my computer here ready to outline this book. Dang it I really have to do it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, it is 440. I have tried many 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 times today to outline this book and I keep getting interrupted other things to do phone calls Zion wakes up earlier than expected, but I have made some progress So I'm not gonna zoom in but basically this is things that must be included in the story because I actually Paused in my plans to outline and I went back to read a bit of book four and was like, oh, yeah That's how that works. I gotta update book two just a tiny tiny bit. I think think. And then I had an idea for the opening image. I started brainstorming in my notebook, but it felt too slow for me. I'm like, I don't have time to handwrite everything. So I'm doing my messy brainstorming in the doc instead, which is going to leave a lot to read. So I'll probably go back and like make a fresh doc later with the like final decisions. Cause I have like, maybe this happens, maybe that happens. I actually have two different possibilities at the beginning. Did he just wake up? Oh my gosh. I thought I heard him wake up. <sighs> 
been one of those days and it's rainy outside and that affects my mood. I don't know about you guys, but ugh, I just gotta shake it off. Yep, I heard him, he's awake. Um, my husband might take him for a minute. So anyway, as I was picturing what could happen, I realized that there's actually quite a few crossroads. I know that the Hanavadei are going to come into play early on in the story that makes it more exciting if they immediately become part of the story. And that made me realize that probably book two should reference them so they don't seem like they're coming out of nowhere because they're not. But then that led to, gosh, how do I tell you without spoilers? Let's just say that there are a couple of different crossroads she could do something willingly or be deceptive about it or she could reveal her secrets to some new people that she's gonna run into because she's gonna meet some new people we'll just leave it at that but I'm basically like halfway through the outline and I haven't made decisions I've just created two possible storylines and I'm not sure which one I like better so because he's awake I'm gonna go get him think about it tonight and then come back to it fresh tomorrow and I think what's really gonna help me is to continue on through the outline and kind of brainstorm both possibilities. I think I've done this before actually thinking back where you don't have to decide right away. You can be like, okay, this could happen or this could happen. And then you just keep moving through the outline and you keep brainstorming multiple possibilities and then kind of see which one you're leaning towards as you go. Cause some of them will just naturally fill out and take shape while others will kind of fall flat and you'll be like, I don't really see this going anywhere. So I'm gonna see which one ends up being the one that I am excited about. <laughs> Stars come to shine. Okay, the audio might be a little different because I'm on my phone right now. I don't want to go down the hall while he's sleeping to get my regular camera, so I'm just gonna use my phone. But I've gotten to this point in the outline. Here on the side, you can see I made a simple outline where I redid all the beats. Well, so far I was writing them and I haven't finished yet with the ending beats, but basically I needed to rewrite it where it wasn't messy because all of this answering the questions, I was kind of typing out my thoughts the way that I normally would in a notebook. And I was doing that in here, which is fine because it's faster. Like I mentioned to you, my process changes with every single book and that's totally fine. This time I was able to kind of process on the computer like here. Maybe she doesn't have a choice or maybe she wavers a little bit. Like I don't know the answer yet so it's not my final outline but then down here is more my final choices and just like more one-liners so I can see it at a glance and remember what I actually went with. <laughs> Basically I'm going back and forth. I'm doing answering the questions in here and then I'm going down to these sections and actually filling in the final choices. So it looks like I actually don't have a lot left to figure out and it's actually really fun i'm liking the direction it's going it looks like just a few more beats are left but i also have this signed copy sale going on that i have to keep track of and then on top of that i have this video to edit with the outlining process that you're gonna see come out right before hopefully this vlog right now. But I still have a full hour, more than an hour's worth of content to cut down. So I've gotten through a really good chunk of it, probably somewhere around, I put in a little placeholder so I wouldn't forget, where is it? Oh, right there, this is where I stopped. So I'm about 11 minutes in and I still have to edit another like 50 minutes down and somehow get this video shorter. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Like I literally don't know what to do. This is gonna be my longest video ever that's not a live stream. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Zion has been napping for almost an hour. So he could get up at any point in time and I'm feeling the crunch time. I should probably stop outlining and go edit that video because technically if I was to keep to my schedule that I've been doing, it should go up tomorrow. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. There's no way. So I'm thinking I'll just skip my second upload this week. That's not a big deal. And just put the video out on Monday, but then I should still edit over the next couple days so that I can give my patrons early access because I really like being able to still do that. I've been able to do that with almost every single video since Zion was born. So I'm like, I think this is doable, except for when I have a beast of a video like this one. Oh, and Zion had a doctor's appointment this morning. So we just got back, you know, basically right before his nap. So it's just been a busy day. <laughs> I've been putting this off. I've also been brainstorming like book title possibilities. And I have started recording that video about how I come up with book titles is gonna come out after this one, but I can't actually put that video out until I decide on my own book titles, <laughs> which I don't know what they are, I don't know. And again, that video is coming out hopefully next week. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that is keeping me from outlining this book, 
but I feel like I would feel a million times better if I just did it. And honestly, it's not that hard because it's not a final outline. It's a brainstorming outline. I just need to spit out the possibilities. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna keep going until Zion wakes up. Maybe I'll finish this outline. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, I finished it and I clicked the monitor on to find that he's awake, having a good time, just hanging out, but I probably should go get him. But before I do, I wanted to share that I kind of did things backwards this time. After I re-outlined for the second time in the computer document, I then did, I'm gonna hold this really far back so you can't read it, but I tried to make it all fit on one page and get the bare bones of it all on one page, all in a row so that I could make sure that I actually had it figured out. And at one point I was like, oh no, there's a big plot hole here, this doesn't work. And then I realized that I just outlined it in a different spot. So it's dead. Officially, it's probably the roughest first draft I've had in a long time since, gosh, maybe when I was outlining the full four book series of the Stolen Kingdom series and I had like a really solid book one, but I didn't really totally know what the others would be. And I think book four was extremely rough. So this is kind of along those lines, I guess. The last book of a series is always the hardest to figure out because you're making it line up with so many others. You have to hold it loosely, I guess. But at the same time, book four in the Stolen Kingdom series, The Enchanted Crown is by far my favorite book out of all the books in that series. I think it was so much fun to write. It was the hardest to write, but it was like pulling all the pieces together and completely Leading the story felt so cool, so good. I eventually do want to do a video about endings. I think maybe after I write this one so that I can feel like I really have had a chance to get a sense of them again because it's been a while since I wrote that. But yeah, I have an outline and it actually makes sense and it's actually really, really, really fun. And again, Jezebel's going into like a different world. We're gonna experience the haunt of a day because that's what this book is about without revealing anything else. Oh, now he's definitely like, Hello, where are you? One other thing I wanted to share before I go get him is there might maybe be a love triangle. I know people have strong feelings about them. And so I don't know, it, it just happened. It feels like it needs to be a part of the story for the story to work. I don't know how strong it's gonna be. It might be more of a background thing. It might be her using him or it might be a real feeling situation. We'll find out together, I guess. It should be interesting. I'm officially very excited to write this book. And so I'm really glad that that was the deciding factor on that last video that we talked about it was by far in a way option two to go on and draft book three, which makes the most sense because I probably should take a break from book two anyway so that I can come back to it with fresh eyes like I always talk about not have writer's blindness I will you know have some space from the book so that then after I draft book three I'll come back to edit book two and it'll be like fresh and I'll be like oh yeah I remember this anyway I think it'll be really good I gotta go get him so I'm gonna end the vlog here let me know what you think and um I'll link this book below so you can go check it out if you want. I definitely recommend it. I talk about it all the time. And then I also will link this video if you want to know my full outlining process. It's a beast of a video. Now I'm going to go get this little cutie. So I will talk to you guys again in the next one. And until then, I hope you have an awesome day. And I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye. It started.